You think one drink won't hurt your blood sugar? Think again. Alcohol can crash it so hard you might not even wake up. Here's what you really need to know before your next drink. Drinking with diabetes doesn't just mess with your blood sugar while you're drinking. It can hit hours later, when you're asleep, and crash your blood sugar so low you don't even feel it happening, or send it flying sky high without warning. Most people with diabetes are never told the real risks, or how to protect themselves if they want to drink safely. Today we're breaking it all down, the safest drinks, the hidden dangers, and the blood sugar traps to avoid at all costs. Drinking with diabetes is a lot riskier than most people realize. It's not just about picking the right drink, it's about what alcohol does once it's in your system. Your liver is basically your backup system. When your blood sugar drops too low, a hypo, your liver steps in and releases stored glucose to bring it back up. But when you drink, your liver gets busy clearing out the alcohol first. It stops helping your blood sugar the way it normally would. If your blood sugar starts falling while you've been drinking, your body's safety net isn't there like it usually is. You can end up in a serious low, and you might not even feel the warning signs. It's even riskier if you've had few drinks without eating, or if you're taking insulin or meds like sulfonylureas that already push blood sugar lower. And it doesn't just stop with lows. Sugary drinks like margaritas, sweet wines, and certain beers can spike your blood sugar through the roof. And if you don't notice it, you might end up chasing crazy high numbers later, needing correction doses or even risking DKA. You might even have a night where your CGM alarm wakes you up, or worse, you sleep through a dangerous low without realizing it. Every drink hits a little differently. Every body reacts a little differently too. Without a plan, every sip becomes a gamble. But if you know what's happening inside your body, you can drink smarter and protect yourself without missing out. Stick around because I'm not just breaking down the safest drinks. I'm showing you real strategies you can use tonight if you're heading out dry red wine like Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir, or Merlot is one of the safer choices if you're living with diabetes. Most dry reds only have about 3 to 4 grams of carbs in a 5 ounce glass, low compared to a lot of other options out there. But even though it's low in carbs, it can still hit you later. Alcohol messes with your liver, remember? So even one or two glasses of wine can lead to a blood sugar crash while you're sleeping, hours after you feel totally fine. If you've ever woken up in the middle of the night sweating, heart racing, feeling like you're in a bad dream, that's probably not random. That's a hypo, and alcohol makes it a lot more likely. If you're drinking red wine, always eat something with it. Even something simple, like grilled chicken, a little brown rice and vegetables, helps give your body a steady fuel source so it's not scrambling later. And don't just guess. Check your blood sugar before bed, even if you feel good. Especially if you've had more than one glass. Dry white wines, like Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, and Chardonnay, land pretty much in the same spot as reds. Low sugar, low carbs, usually around 3 to 4 grams per glass. But you gotta watch what bottle you're picking. Not every wine that says dry on the label is actually dry. Some cheaper brands sneak in more sugar, and you don't want to get blindsided. The blood sugar crash risk is still real with white wine too. People think because it's a light drink it's safer, but alcohol plays by its own rules inside your body, and it doesn't care if your wine is light or dark. If you're having white wine, have it with a proper meal, not just cheese and crackers, something that actually gives you slow-burning carbs. And if you use a CGM, Set a middle-of-the-night alarm just in case. Waking up to a low because of a glass of wine isn't just annoying. It can be dangerous. Vodka is one of those go-to choices for a lot of people with diabetes because it's technically carb-free. No sugar. No carbs. Just alcohol. Sounds perfect, right? Except it's not. Because that zero-carb buzz can fool you into thinking it's safe while it's quietly setting you up for a crash later. Mixing vodka with diet soda? Yeah, it's low carb, but it's also giving your body nothing to hold on to. No backup fuel means when your blood sugar starts dropping it can fall hard and fast. If you're having vodka, eat before you drink, not after. Even just some whole grain crackers with peanut butter or a turkey sandwich gives your body something to burn. And don't race through shots like you're 19. Sip slow. Stay ahead of it. You don't want your night ending with someone waving glucose tabs over your face. 
Gin's another clear liquor that's carb-free. But the real danger isn't usually the gin. It's what people mix with it. If you're ordering a gin and tonic and not paying attention, guess what? Regular tonic water has about 30 grams of sugar per can. That's like pouring soda straight into your bloodstream. If you like gin, stick with club soda or diet tonic. Add a squeeze of lemon or lime if you want flavor without the sugar bomb. And don't drink on an empty stomach. Have a meal, or at least some protein-heavy snacks like grilled shrimp or nuts, so you don't get caught off guard later when your blood sugar suddenly tanks. If you've ever had that feeling where you stand up after a few drinks and realize you're dizzy and sweating, that's not just alcohol. That's your blood sugar crashing. Whiskey, whether it's bourbon, scotch, rye, or Irish. Doesn't have carbs either once it's been distilled. No hidden sugars. Straight alcohol. But that doesn't mean it's a free pass. Your liver still must process it, and when it does, it puts your blood sugar on the back burner. If your glucose starts to dip after whiskey, it might not catch itself in time. Best way to stay safe with whiskey? Drink it straight or with water not with sugary mixers like cola or sweetened ginger ale. Those mixers turn a zero-carb drink into a sugar roller coaster and eat beforehand. Even just a handful of mixed nuts or a slice of whole grain toast with some almond butter can seriously reduce your risk of crashing out later. Also, watch out for flavored whiskeys. They taste like candy for a reason, because they basically are candy, loaded with sugar and way easier to overdo. When it comes to beer, Coors Light is honestly one of the safer choices for people watching their blood sugar. One 12 ounce can only have about five grams of carbs. That's way lower than a regular beer, which can hit you with 12, 15, sometimes even 20 grams in a single glass. It's not totally free of impact. Drink enough of anything and your blood sugar can start to drift. But Coors Light makes it easier to stay steady compared to heavier beers. The trick is not stacking cans back to back, one beer might barely move your blood sugar. Three or four? That's a slow build that could either crash you or spike you depending on what else is going on in your body. Stack a few beers back to back and next thing you know you're chasing a high blood sugar with correction doses. Or worse, rage, bolusing in the middle of the night and waking up even higher. If you're drinking Coors Light, sip slow. Eat something that has a little fat and protein to slow things down like a small chicken wrap, or a taco with beans and veggies. It's not about making beer the enemy. It's about knowing your limits before you start guessing. Miller Lite might be even better than Coors Light for diabetes control. One can has about 3.2 grams of carbs. That's crazy low, lower than a lot of so-called low-carb energy bars. You're way less likely to see a big spike with Miller Lite compared to regular craft beer or IPA. But low-carb doesn't mean no risk. The alcohol is still there, and if you drink Miller Lite on an empty stomach, you're still playing with delayed lows later in the night. Eat before you drink, pace yourself, and check your numbers when you get home if you're not wearing a CGM. It's way better to catch a low creeping in early than wake up at 3 a.m. needing a full-out emergency snack raid. Amstelite is another solid beer pick if you want something easy on blood sugar. It has about 5 grams of carbs per bottle, right in the same ballpark as Coors Light. Taste-wise, Amstel Light tends to feel a little heavier, so you might naturally drink it slower. That's a good thing if you're trying to avoid blood sugar swings. If you're out at a party, reaching for Amstel Light early on makes it way easier to keep things predictable compared to switching from mixed drinks or heavy beers later, when your judgment's already a little fuzzy. Food pairing still matters. A few slices of cheese, some olives, even a small handful of almonds can make a massive difference in how your body handles a few beers. Again, it's not about quitting alcohol forever. It's about stacking the odds in your favor from the first drink. Prosecco seems innocent, tiny bubbles, light flavor, but it can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The good news is dry Prosecco, especially Brut Prosecco, usually has only about one to two grams of carbs per glass. That's almost nothing compared to sugary mixed drinks or dessert wines. The bad news is, not all Proseccos are created equal. If the label says extra dry or demi-sec, that's more sugar, not less. It's confusing. But wine labeling isn't made for people trying to manage blood sugar. 
If you're sticking with Brut Prosecco and drinking it slowly with food, it can be one of the best celebration drinks if you have diabetes. Just don't chug it like soda. The bubbles make it super easy to drink fast, and that's how you lose track of how much alcohol is hitting your system. Eating something salty, like prosciutto, nuts, or cheese, with your Prosecco keeps things more balanced and helps you stay ahead of any surprises. Because nobody wants to be the person who crashes halfway through a wedding toast. All right. After all that, the different drinks, the hidden risks, what are the real golden rules you need to follow to stay safe when you drink? If you're living with diabetes and you still want to enjoy a drink once in a while, it's not impossible. You just need to be smarter than the alcohol and way ahead of your blood sugar. Here's what really matters. First, always eat first. Seriously, never drink on an empty stomach. Even something simple, like a sandwich, some eggs, a small bowl of rice, gives your body backup fuel. It's the difference between a fun night and waking up at 3 a.m. needing a juice box. Second, choose your drink like it matters. Dry wines, light beers, plain spirits like vodka, gin, whiskey. These are your safer bets, not sugary cocktails, not a mystery punch. Know what's in your glass before you sip. Third, take it slow. One drink per hour max. When you have diabetes, alcohol hits differently, and your body's already multitasking enough. Fourth, water is your best move. Drink a full glass of water between every alcoholic drink. It keeps you hydrated and buys your body time to handle both the alcohol and your blood sugar without freaking out. Fifth, know where your numbers are at. If you don't have a CGM, check your blood sugar before drinking, before sleeping, and honestly, sometime in between if you can. Lows love to sneak up while you're passed out, and sometimes the signs feel like normal tiredness until it's too late. Sixth, keep rescue carbs close. Glucose tabs, gummies, a juice box, whatever's easy to grab if things start sliding, and make sure someone around you knows you have diabetes, especially if you're going out. Seventh, watch for delayed crashes. You might feel fine when you head to bed, but lows can hit hours later. If you can, eat a small snack before sleeping. A little peanut butter toast or a handful of nuts can work wonders. It's way easier to prevent a crash than wake up in the middle of one. Eighth, know how your meds interact. If you're on insulin or blood sugar lowering meds like sulfonylureas, drinking can hit even harder. Talk to your doctor if you're not sure. Guessing is not a strategy. Ninth, trust your limits. Some people can sip wine all night and be fine. Others crash after half a beer. If you feel like alcohol just isn't worth the stress, you're not missing out. You're being smart. You don't have to give up drinks forever if you don't want to. You just must know what's happening inside your body and stay one step ahead of it. Drinking with diabetes isn't about fear. It's about knowing what alcohol really does inside your body and staying one step ahead. Most people aren't taught this stuff. They're told drink in moderation and left to figure it out alone. Now you know better. It's not just about the drink you pick. It's about eating first, pacing yourself, and staying in control of your blood sugar the whole time. You don't have to quit drinking forever. You just have to drink smarter because your health always comes first. For more real-world diabetes advice, hit subscribe.